Hi folks, Sean with the Wingman 115 channel. Thanks for checking in. I have my good friend and sidekick here on the channel, Jaime Delapata from JLD Instinctive Archery. See, I have to have him say it because in my mind, I always get it backwards. I don't know what it is. But we're out here today, Mount Laguna. We're testing out some systems. Jaime over here is using the um, Firebox Nano with some Esbit uh, fire tabs. So we're doing a quick like field test on that to see how that's going to work out. And I'm using the Simple Theory Gear stove. I've done a video on that a while back. I'll leave a link in the video description below. But we're just out here brewing some coffee, uh, warming up some food. And we thought we'd do kind of like a woods vlog for you guys. Now we're up near the uh, Palomar, uh, not Palomar, gosh, I don't even know where I'm at today. The Mount Laguna Observatory, which is run by um, San Diego State University. Just an awesome facility up there. Uh, we were up there just scouting it out, checking it out. And uh, we thought we would brew a cup of coffee and just... Uh, take in the awesomeness of the woods today now i'm going to flip the camera around so we can see what jaime's cooking maybe he can talk about his system here real quick hey guys how y'all doing jaime de Parra, as john said of jld instinctive archery so it's doing a little bit of woods time so i'm doing one of my favorite uh outdoor cuisines i mean it's a no-brainer for a lot of people uh ramen but i do try to church it up a little bit so there's different ingredients that uh, i like to add so this is just some cut up sausage bits, normally what they would use for pigs in a blanket. I cut them up at home just to get it done with some green onions. Uh, I also brought some lime, so I'm gonna squeeze some lime juice in there. Let me tell you, it's great. Uh, and you can always church it up. When I was in the army and I was in South Korea, that's where I learned the, the, the different ways to make ramen. So for those of you guys that, that have been in South Korea and know, know what I'm talking about, it's so yeah, just a simple thing to make here. And again, you can always add more stuff, have it already pre-cut. So just waiting for the water to boil. I want to see how these Esbit tablets work with the Firebox Nano. Talk a little bit about your system, what you're using here. So the for those that are not familiar with, the Firebox was designed by uh, Steve, I forgot his name, uh, but he's on YouTube, his channel is Firebox, if I'm not mistaken, is that correct? Firebox John? stove, I think. Firebox stove. So I'll he, leave a link in the video description below. So he does make a much larger, uh, uh, kind of like a, a, a bush, uh, bush stove, if you will, or bush box. So this is a smaller version. Now this is the second gen, but it's a, a very simple way to put either your biofuel fuel, or in this case, a tablet. Uh, you can also incorporate alcohol stoves and he's got different accoutrements that allows this to happen. So for me, normally I'm just burning you know, wood and whatever biofuel, but I did want to try out these SBIT tablets that I got from Hitbox Outfitters in Ramona. So check those guys out if you're a local. So simply just bringing water to boil, adding my ingredients and that's it. But I'm trying to see how long is it's gonna take. Also because of, typically the SBIT tablets need to be a little bit closer to whatever container you're boiling water in. So again, experimentation. Uh, so I'm doing it here We're we're not, out in the wilderness deep deep for days on end so this is a great place to to see what's the run time on this and and to get it going so just a simple simple system it actually fits in where's my kit and the self-reliance this is the canteen uh, uh cook mess kit so that's what's actually you're seeing here if you've those that know probably already know normally it comes with its own little stove that you could put over some coals and boil water or boil the canteen on that but i i like this especially we're here in california where we got to be careful where we burn stuff in the woods so that's why i incorporate the nano system and it fits in perfectly inside the pouches so i'm sure that everyone knows about this, this isn't nothing new this, this product's been out but of course maybe i'll do well i guess i'll drop it all now i've added an old school army first aid kit I gutted it and put in the things that I need for out in the woods. Everything from band-aids to mosquito repellent to uh, uh, diarrhea tablets, uh, painkillers, all kinds of things that I know that I would need uh, just for a uh, minor patch you up and let's get you back home if, if, if something happened. Also got the good old Baco Laplander and there's some kind of an ammo uh, magazine type pouch that someone suggested for the Baco Laplander. Y'all can see it in there. Uh, great gift that John gave me here with the uh, Brockimo from Topps Knives. 
So this is kind of like my backup tool. Got a little garbage back there in case, uh, either for a lot of trash, but really mostly for improvised uh, rain gear, if this is all I'm rocking. And then all kinds of other accoutrements, compasses, fire starting. So this is an all-in-all -all kit for me, and I can just rock and roll with this. But when I got some other stuff, I do have my Hen Woodsman pack. This is one of the uh, original uh, bags that started it all, according to uh, Mr. Malcolm. He made a comment on one of my Instagram posts. Yeah, that is the OG right there. OG, another great gift from good old Wingman. <laughs> and just, you know, uh, uh, just uh, pushing more on, on what would be needed. Uh, for what we're doing today, it's probably overkill, but, you know, I got my shelter, I got some cutting boards, got my little hatchet, my uh, S-Wing hatchet in there. I did a great view uh, review or a quick tip on wrapping the handle of the S-Wing. I'll leave that link in the uh, description down below as well. A lot of people have this hatchet, but no one wraps the handle. It's great for the cold temps if you don't have gloves on or it just gives you a better grip. So anyway, so just more of what us people that head out to the woods, it just helps. So this in combination with that uh, um, uh, canteen cook kit, nice. it's, it's a great combo for me. And that's these are staples for me when I get out into the woods. And of course, rocking my yellow hawk customs out yeah, boys kind of sheath with the mount laguna and i have a video coming out soon of him describing that whole system so be on the lookout for that video dropping soon i'm drinking some starbucks caramel flavored ground coffee this is their buttery smooth caramel flavored coffee and no we're not sponsored by starbucks but i really like this and i'm not a huge coffee drinker per se, but it just tastes really good out here in the woods. So I was using the S-Bits in my little firebox nano and it just wasn't enough. So I decided to combine that with some uh, biofuel with some wood. And uh, this is where my little pinky lanyard situation comes in. I know in, uh, what was that reviewer? Uh, outdoor, uh, Outer Limitless. Outer Limitless, it. Eric. Uh, but I also, I've, I've done a video on this, but this is the pinky lanyards this is where they come in. And uh, maybe it's just a little too much to try to break over the knee. And instead of digging and getting others tools out, this is on my hip ready to go and uh, I could just do some light chopping just to break it have a little bit more of a surgical uh, procedure and and what I'm trying to do and break it enough in enough sizes for my firebox nano so it's just the usage of the pinky lanyard it really lets you get more of that forward weight so for such a short knife most of your four inch blades won't do what this one just did a lot of people are probably wondering what that coffee filter is that is a sea to summit and it's a silicon coffee filter works really well compresses down upon itself weighs next to nothing so when we're coming out doing some of this uh hiking and just exploring it just makes it nice that way i don't have to carry a thermos it's just part of the ambiance of just being outdoors so if you're bicycle camping, you're fishing, you're hunting, you're doing all sorts of stuff, let me tell you what, this coffee filter may work for you really well. Now, I only put two spoons of uh, coffee in there for this eight ounce cup, depending on how you uh, like your coffee and how strong. I just drink it straight, no creamer, no sugar, and uh, we just roll with it like that. But this whole system with the Simple Theory Gear stove, I just collected some like dead oak limbs as we were hiking today and I just broke them down into a little pile. I mean, I had next to nothing and it's, let's, let's take a peek. It's starting to come along. I mean, I just put this on the fire just moments ago. So 
it's all about the process and just relaxing and enjoying the area that we're at. Here's a secret touch. I should have brought in some chopped garlic. That would have really made it nice. Yeah, it would have. <laughs> like food network stuff you got <laughs> going on there. Like some top ramen menudo. Oh yeah. Looks really good. Oh yeah. It smells good too with that lime flavor now yeah, hitting that water. It up. Take your limes out to the wood. There you go. Let's see. So just a little follow up on the Simple Theory stove. I'm liking it. It's working really well. The system's compact. The Stanley pot fits right down inside of that stove and it just works really well. Um, especially in the environment that we're in, there's a lot of really just super dried out fuel. And I pointed this out behind me. You can take this ring off and if you had a campfire, you could flip this over and bring over some of the coals from your campfire. And now you have a cooking surface. Also, your pot would fit in there perfect. So if you're around a campfire, you still have a pot stand, a frying pan stand that you could use. It's made out of stainless steel. You are not going to hurt this system. And everything just collapses down on top of itself. Works really well. Just wanted to share it with you guys in some long-term use of this stove. Cheers, folks. Here's a cup of coffee for you guys out there. Just awesome. Jaime's over here cleaning his camp kitchen. Oh, I had dirt. a taste of the uh, ramen that he made. I must say, it was really good. So, a little bit of like Food Channel stuff for you guys while we're out here. We, we try to always bring out the very best uh, in content and production value. We like doing these vlogs, these off the cuff uh, videos. I think they connect better with you guys out there that, you know, we're gear reviewers, we're this, we're that, but we're also real people as well. And we come out here no agenda today. We were just like, hey, we're just going to go out to the woods and and uh, walk around, do whatever. I had gotten my Jeep fixed It had after a month in the shop. So if you're a Jeep owner, you probably understand of <laughs> why stuff's in the shop. But took it out here on a shakedown uh, run and uh, had another issue happen, not mechanical, but just cosmetic. So more money going into the mobile studio. So we're going to see if we hang on to the mobile studio uh, going forward. I don't know yet. The jury's out. Uh, we're constantly always thinking about different modes of transportation and what we're going to do. So uh, with that, I mean, we'll show you some of the sights, maybe some of the sounds of what we're seeing today. Uh, a lot of people out in the woods. I mean, we bumped into just a ton of people and today's a weekday too a thursday you would think you know don't people work for a living but they're out here uh riding around checking out the sites we even bumped into uh what would you say some like seal candidate training uh, type stuff phase three bud student doing some land navigation yeah there you go it's our second time doing that when we come up here so they they're known to come out and do that out here i talked to a buddy of mine that's retired and back in his day they were coming out to this region to do their third phase of land navigation so pretty cool see the next generation of operators going through the training it, it made us feel old this guy <laughs> kid he looked he looked like a freshman in high school maybe because we're getting that old i don't know i don't feel that old but you know these guys are i mean they're out there you know, they're the tip of the spear doing it and uh, mass respect to those guys even volunteering to do that type of training. It takes a lot out of you mentally, physically, just all around. But uh, 
they're out here. You never know who you're going to bump into out here in the woods. So with that, let's cut away and let's check out some more stuff. Come on. So we're hiking along and just so you always think that you're the first one ever to touch an area, somebody lost their iPhone out here probably while they were uh, sledding in the snow. So we'll take it down to the truck and we'll see if it'll turn on. We're using the Mount Laguna as reference to that, but Jaime spotted that out of the corner of his eyes while walking along. Forest fire came through here probably, I want to say, 10 years ago. And just look how long it just takes to recover. But, I mean, life, just like on Jurassic Park, it always finds a way, right? <laughs> 